Hi, I'm Mighty More Cowbell, and I'm going to show off some of the hardware I use during streams and overall in general life. This is the Xbox Elite Controller, a controller I have had for over six years. Well, not this one, but I have been using an Elite Controller since the release of Halo 5 in October 2015, so think of this as a long haulers review of the controller. It has uh, your standard Xbox Fair buttons, X, Y, A, B set up, two analog sticks offset from each other, and a D-pad all can be replaced and interchanged. There's also a start button and a left start button, a switch to change between two profiles, Xbox guide slash power button for the controller, two bumpers and two triggers with distance locks, and the main reason I got this, four programmable paddles to designate almost anything to them. This is also sporting the chat pad attachment that came out the following month. A little history of why I wanted this controller. When Halo Reach and Gears of War 3 came out, I had a controller that had remappable buttons and the analog sticks had tension dials, and it was the best. The tension dials allowed me to slow down my movements when aiming with a sniper rifle, and I was able to actually hit my shots for one. And with the programmable buttons, they allowed me to constantly keep track of an enemy that was wall bouncing around me and melee them without ever taking my thumb off the analog stick. Similar in Halo Reach, I would be able to jump, shoot, aim, and melee more accurately with less effort. But those didn't last long as they were poor quality. So when the Elite Controller was announced, I was ecstatic about it. I bought my first one through GameStop and returned it in under three months due to a broken left bumper. And a year later, I got to return my second one through Microsoft's extended warranty program that they started due to the backlash of the controller quality. Again, due to a broken left bumper, but now also a broken right bumper. Though to be fair, at this point, I have had the bumpers replaced with OEM parts that I got from eBay. And when word came out about the extended warranty, I put all the original parts back in and sent it on its way. They sent me a brand new controller, and one year later, the Xbox One X came out, and with it, a new extended warranty for the controller, which I used because, of, again, the bumpers were broken. But also now, the top left paddle would no longer work as it felt soft and wouldn't recognize button presses. This was real painful as I used it for jumping in all games and run and take cover in Gears of War. They almost didn't even accept it at first, but because I just got the One X, they attached it to its warranty and asked me to send back only the controller. And then they sent me back a whole new controller. And as you can see, I now own two of these carrying cases. So actually, I have had this controller for three years, since 2018. As you can see, it is a little rough around all the edges. So let's go over what has happened to it. The left bumper was the first thing to break. It turns out that the left and right bumper is one piece of cheap plastic. But I guess the way I hold my controller is also to blame. As I use my index finger for both the bumpers and the triggers, it ends up putting a twisting tension on the bumper and the plastic ends up snapping because of it. I realized this when I was playing and the left bumper shot out of the controller and flew towards the screen during an intense free-for-all session. The right bumper broke shortly after and when things are getting sweaty, they tend to fly out again. As you can see, they actually pop up and if I have the controller pointing downwards, these things tend to hang there, out of place, making it awkward to press them back in, as they might click back in wrong. They remind me of when I would have a loose tooth and would like click it back into place kinda, but it still didn't feel right. The next thing to go were the rubberized grips on the back, as over time the heat from my hand slowly caused them to expand and eventually just popped off. I've been using the controller without these for about two years now. Next up is the top left paddle. I was able to Mickey Mouse it to work with some tape that applied pressure to this end, but it was only temporary and over time it got worse. After some close examining with some good light, I found out that the reason it is soft is because the area of the housing is actually cracked and not providing enough support for the top paddle. With enough time, it is also now affecting the bottom paddle and sometimes it won't recognize the button presses, which I have programmed to be X, so I'm unable to say run away through a door in Apex Legends because it won't open and I get shot struggling to open it. Well, why don't you use the face button? Because I've had six years of conditioning of using the pack paddles as X. To the front! The face buttons are perfectly fine due to little or no real use. <laughs> the left analog stick tends to randomly have slight drift and it causes my character to slowly walk backwards in some games when I'm not looking. But the right, oh boy! The right analog stick makes it look like my characters are always falling asleep. Here's a clip of me trying to snipe from cover in Gears 5. 
and here in Apex Legends, or here in PSO2 New Genesis, and now in Halo Infinite. The right analog stick also tends to be oddly loose. If I hold the controller upside down above me like I would if I was laying on the couch, it tends to pop out and hang there in a silly fashion. And you know what? That's not even the worst part of the analog sticks for me. One of their touted features is that they and the D-pad are magnetically held in place, so you can easily swap them for a different set, like these terrible PlayStation style domes or these gross tall boys. My problem with them is that they are magnetically held in place, so you can easily swap them for a different set. There have been far too many occasions where I am in the middle of extreme combat and one of the sticks goes flying across the room, leaving me to fight for my life while stabbing my thumb with this awkward connector. Same thing with a D-pad. I don't necessarily understand how it happens, but at least five times I have pressed it in such a way that it comes loose and falls to the ground. The right analog stick tends to go on a journey to the other side of the room more than the left since it is used for aiming, whereas the left is just obviously directional movement. You may have noticed the light wear on these sticks. This started happening last year during the great lockdown time. I was playing a lot of PSO2 during last year and these sticks have become old and tired. The right one is actually to blame for a recent blackness that appears from time to time under my thumb as the rubber breaks and piles up under there. And this just started happening last week. The start button is smooshy and slow to pop back up, but the left button uh, is fine. The guide button is missing some of the luster as well from usage. I've been using these rechargeable interlow batteries since the first controller, and they are a little rough too, and aren't lasting as long, but I can't complain about using the same four batteries for six years. Bonus time, Xbox One chat pad. I love this thing. Best accessory for the Xbox, and it has been discontinued for years. It connects to the controller through the digital interface at the bottom, and the chat pad provides a full QWERTY keyboard experience in the palm of your hands. It has been invaluable for PSO2 and also minor trash talking in years. As I said, it is discontinued, which is a huge shame, as it features a few things that no third-party chat pads have. For instance, there is a programmable X1 and X2 button, which by default take a screenshot or record a clip. This has been great since the Xbox One X didn't have Connect support out of the box, so I couldn't scream, Xbox, record that, anymore. There is also a green and orange button to shift functions to use additional sets of symbols. There is a mic mute button, volume up and down buttons on the right side, and on the left side, two buttons that prioritize the audio between party chat and game chat, allowing you to make one louder than the other freely without having to go to the menu. A few gripes with this thing is the audio jack is poor quality and tends to get loose easily inside the housing, causing the audio in the headset to not be as loud or missing from one ear. I tend to plug in the headphone jack and wiggle it till I get good audio, then tape it down to hold it in its position. This tends to mess with the microphone audio though and ruin party chat fun, causing me to remove the chat pad for off party time conversations. There are a couple of games that have keyboard support and by extension they end up supporting the chat pad. The PSO2 being the best in my experience due to the nature of the game, just chatting with people. After some time you get used to using it without looking down at the keyboard as it has little nibs on the F and J keys just like a full grown keyboard. The one main flaw I found out only after PSO2 came out is that there is no alt or control button. PSO2 allows you to register shortcut words for quick chat like nice, great job, and baka. Using control 1 through 9. And the alt button allows for lobby actions like emotes using alt A through Z. All other actions work just like with a keyboard like pulling up your area map with N, pulling up the inventory with I, as well as using your sub palette actions with one through zero without having to use the D-pad to toggle over to the action you want to perform. I have also changed some keyboard commands in Halo Infinite, which I'm still learning if it's a great idea or not, but I'm, you know, hey, 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 I got plenty of time. A little extra thing when I am in between rounds or waiting for the loading screens, I tend to fidget around with the controller by exacerbating the problems like pulling off the analog sticks and spinning them 45 degrees and letting go, cooking the bumpers back in and digging my nails into the back of the case and just pulling it apart. So this is my review for the Xbox Elite controller, six years in the making. I really like this controller and even though it is asking to be put down, I still use it over the various standard controllers that are in perfect condition that came with my Xbox One and Xbox One X. Despite all the issues I have spent the last 14 minutes pointing out, I cannot bring myself to buy a new controller at nearly $200. I haven't come close to save that kind of money without other life issues taking priority. That and the Series 2 seems to have a lot of the same issues as the Series 1, with stick drift, broken bumpers, 
but I am worried most about the paddle support breaking again, as I am sure it is made out of plastic, and really only seems to be my issue. And with the official Xbox controllers having this price tag and build quality, I didn't feel like rolling the dice on a third party controller. But you know what, let's talk about things I would like to see in the Series 3, which I was hoping would have been released this year since it's been 3 years since the Series 2 was released and 6 years since the Series 1 came out. Number 1, it is of course better analog sticks instead of the same garbage the Elite Series 1 and the PlayStation controllers have. Come on, that's terrible. They just stick drift all over the place. Number 2, a reinforced metal plate for the back paddles. I'm aware that this may only be a me thing, but it has happened on two of the four controllers and I am sure that the first and second one would have cracked too if I had them long enough. Number three, bumpers made out of a metal instead of a plastic. Or just a straight up redesign. Because this is terrible as they basically break in everyone's controller. Number four, oh, a larger version. My favorite most comfortable controller is a Duke from the original Xbox. So an Xbox Elite Duke controller. Wait, wait, wait. With a brand new chat pad with a 3.5 jack facing upwards so I can lay down and not have the jack stab me in the stomach and not bend it. Also give the keyboard an alt and control button. Maybe uh, a secure grip for your, your phone because they are pushing xCloud so much. I think that sounds great. I would pay $200 for that with an additional for the chat pad. And that is going to be my long haulers review for the Xbox Elite Controller Series 1 and the Xbox chat pad. I stream every weekday on YouTube and Twitch where I just made some new emotes. So stop by and follow so you can spam those at me or subscribe here or don't. I also have a Twitter and an Instagram for some reason and of course a Discord. I am I Need More Cowbell. Take care of yourself and see you next time. Oh.